Hey everybody, Sebastian here with Cosmic Candy. Today, I wanted to talk about the latest update to the Atlas Drum Sampler plugin, Atlas 2. After being in development for two years, Atlas 2 has finally been released and comes with some pretty big changes. Let's check them out. Here we have the factory map that comes with Atlas 2, and you will notice that there is a delay from when you select a sample to when you hear it. Also, it takes a few seconds for a new kit to be fully created when you click the new kit button. This is because the factory map samples are not included in the install but are being downloaded from the cloud as you select them. Additionally, the samples are not in their full quality, hence the LQ labels, which stands for low quality. So to get fast playback and the factory samples at their full quality, you can download them individually by selecting a sample and clicking on the download icon. Or you can download all the samples from the map by clicking on the cloud icon. If we go to the corner here, we can see that we now have two map modes, Earth and Galaxy. In Earth mode, more samples reveal themselves in the map as you zoom up, just like the previous version of Atlas. And in Galaxy mode, all of our samples can be seen, regardless of the zoom level. Another neat feature is this button here. When enabled, you can preview your samples just by moving your mouse around them. We can also see samples that we have favorited and can even reset all of them if we wanted to start fresh again. More on that in just a bit. We can remove samples from our map by selecting the sample we want removed and clicking the Remove button. We can't remove samples from the Atlas factory map, so the Remove button doesn't show. But if I open a map I created, you can see the Remove button right here. Also, we can change the playback volume when triggering samples on the map by adjusting the map volume knob. And for the entire plugin by adjusting the master gain knob here. Finally, let's look at two new features in the map section. One feature is the ability to import maps from the previous version of Atlas. If I click Import, Atlas 2 will convert and import my Atlas maps. The second feature is support for a wider range of audio file formats. If I click Create New Map and go to Advanced Options, you can see that there are multiple file formats we can choose to include in the scanning process. And by checking Other, we have access to even more formats. Now let's take a look at the Drum Kit and Pad sections of Atlas 2. In the Drum Kit section, we have two new features. One is that we can embed our map samples into our DAW project. When this feature is enabled, the samples in your map are saved within the project file, so you can still trigger the samples even if, for example, they were on an external drive and you didn't have the drive with you. The second feature is the ability to select a drum sample with MIDI. Now, when you play notes on your MIDI controller, the drum pad section above changes to the sample that's being triggered. Moving to the drum pad area, there are several things that have changed. First off, the volume curve, filter resonance, and fine tune knobs have been brought to the front. In the previous version of Atlas, we had to click on a switch in order to reveal them. Another thing that's changed is the like and dislike feature has been replaced with favorite. If you hear a sample you like, you can click on the star icon, which will highlight it 
in the favorite map. And if you would like to reset this map, you can click on the reset button here and click yes to clear it. If we go to the advanced section, we can see that an area called variation has been added, which is a great way to humanize your samples. Here, we can add different amounts of variation to parameters like velocity so that the volume of the sample changes every time it's triggered and pitch so that the pitch varies each time it's triggered. Additionally, we can vary the sample start time, the filter cutoff, and panning. And there's also a pan mirror option that mirrors the pan variation in both the left and right channels. Now let's check out the two biggest features that have been added to Atlas 2, the sequencer and the browser. The browser has two sections, random and content. The content section is where we can see what packs we have installed, which packs are available to download, and our atlas maps. Packs are essentially presets of pre-made drum kits and or sequences, and Atlas 2 has five of them that we can download. If I expand this Algonaut House and Techno pack here, I can see all the loops it contains, and I can load one by double clicking it. If I expand the loop, I can see the drum kit and sequence that make up that loop, and they can be loaded individually. They can be further expanded, revealing the samples that make up the drum kit and patterns that make up the sequence. These samples and patterns can be dragged and dropped into the drum kit and sequence lanes, respectively. The neat thing about this is that we can load samples and sequences from different packs, which brings me to the random section. Here, we have four buttons. Loop randomly selects a loop from the browser. Drum kit randomly selects a drum kit from the browser. Sequence randomly selects a sequence from the browser. And Loop Spliced randomly selects a drum kit and sequence from the browser. You can save your loops, drum kits, and sequences by clicking on the floppy disk icon, selecting which one you want to save, where you want to save it, I'll save it to the user folder, and naming it. We can also create our own packs by right clicking on the user folder and selecting Create Pack. I'll name my pack Cool Pack. Put my name for the author. And for the genre, I'll put Chill. For the thumbnail of the pack, I can upload my own picture or generate a random one. I'll click Save to create the pack file and then drag it into the browser to install it. Now let's take a closer look at Atlas 2's sequencer. The sequencer is where we create and edit our drum beats. Notes can be added manually by clicking in the sequencer and we can adjust their velocity by expanding the channel lane. We can add notes here as well. We can cut, copy, and paste notes from one lane to another, and we can nudge the notes in the channel forwards or backwards in time. You can quickly generate a new sequence by selecting an option from the drop down menu and then clicking New Sequence. From Browser, generates a sequence from the browser window. while Variation modifies your current sequence
and random chaos generates a random sequence. These options can also be applied to individual channel lanes. We can record patterns to the sequencer by clicking on the record button, hitting play, and triggering the notes on a MIDI controller. We can add more groove to a sequence by using the shuffle knob, which shifts the start time of notes. Let's take this Deep House progressive loop for example. The notes of our sequence can be shifted forwards and backwards by clicking on the left and right arrows. And we can change the length of our sequence from 4 beats up to 16. We even have the ability to change the length of individual channel lanes, allowing us to create a polyrhythm. We can change the step size of the sequencer from 16th note triplets to 32nd notes. There's also a feature called Mirror Edit, which is a useful way to quickly add a note every beat, every other beat, or every four beats. The sequencer can be bypassed by using the toggle switch and we can set the sequencer's BPM independently from our DAWs by clicking on the chain link icon. You can even set the tempo by tapping on the BPM label. Another big change with Atlas 2 is the export feature, which lets us export audio and MIDI. For MIDI, we can export the channeling patterns to a single MIDI file by selecting Mix Down, or into individual MIDI files by selecting Stems. And we also have the option of including the timing offsets given by the shuffle and nudge knobs. Below you can select which tracks you want to include in the export. Once you have the MIDI tracks you want, click on Render, and now you can drag the MIDI file or files right into your DAW. You can also click on the folder icon to view the location of the MIDI files. To export audio, go to the audio section. Here, we can export the beat into a single WAV file by selecting Mix Down, or we can export the patterns as individual WAV files by selecting Stems and we can normalize the audio to 0 dBFS by checking the Normalize box. There are a few ways we can export our beat. We can have it so that the tail of the audio isn't wrapped to the beginning of the loop. We can have it so that the tail is wrapped to the beginning of the loop. Or we can just render the tail of the loop. And we can even combine all three if we'd like. Just like with MIDI, we can select which patterns we want to include in our rendered audio. After clicking on Render, I can drag the WAV file or files into my DAW or click on the folder icon to view the location of the WAV files. So that was a look at the new features that come with Atlas 2. I find them exciting and valuable and look forward to seeing what features will come in the next iteration of Atlas. With that said, I hope you found this video useful, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.